Hello friends, this is Chandrakant uh, from Aquilmac Technologies and today in the tips section, we would like to discuss how you, me, everyone today can utilize, can power pack their uh, machines, individual machines. And as you know that, you, you know, most of these laptops and PCs that we use comes with multiple cores. And the people who actually tell us how to use these machines will tell us that, hey, if you have a very high advanced CPU, you should also have corresponding, uh, you know, high speed memory and also high speed hard disk. And uh, nevertheless, you should also have a high speed network to support all of that. Once you have all of these uh, uh, things at, in your PC, then you will be able to do your video calling, etc. Uh, most of these uh, machines will come preloaded with Windows and most of us knows that, uh, you know, the Windows are there whether paid version or free version, all kinds of windows are there and, and, and stuff like that. So the whole point is that, you know, when we have such high end machines, are we utilizing all of them, uh, all the uh, uh, CPU power and uh, the memory effectively? If not, then what are the other possibilities that we can use our machines for when they are not, uh, you know, maxed out based on their memory and so on? So when we actually start looking at our PC, we should look at at least, uh, you know, four core uh, processors, whether 10th generation or 9th generation Intel or AMD chips. And then if there are four cores, that means uh, there are four different CPUs within one CPU. That means if you have more CPUs, you can do more processing. However, most of us are using it for video calling and um, MS Word kind of activities. At the same time, we are stuck with the uh, Windows platform and uh, there are other platforms like Linux has also come up in a big way. So you may, be a, you may be a nerd, you may be a techie who would like to try things. You may be, uh, uh, you know, itching to try a new game which has uh, come up but that does not run on your PC and uh, you don't want to basically disturb the configuration of your PC uh, but you want to play a game. You want to do ethical hacking uh, and the whole point is that you don't want to use your machine for hacking. You want to be able to create a new machine or buy a new one. So today I will tell you exactly what it takes to uh, do all of these things without spending any money and uh, be able to do that using your existing hardware. But, you know, when we say that you should have existing hardware, nevertheless, you should also have adequate hardware in the sense that if you have a very old machine, Pentium machine, obviously what I'm trying, going to tell you will not work. So you should have at least 10 generation uh, Intel or AMD Ryzen with at least 8 GB of uh, uh, RAM and at least uh, one terabyte of hard disk. If you have these uh, specs, which are very normal, you know, nowadays, if you look at the lowest end PC or laptop that you can buy in the market will have at least a, a four core chip, uh, eight to 16 GB RAM, and at least one terabyte uh, hard disk. So if you have all of this, you can then create virtual machines. So today I will tell you what, how to do it. And it is not something which is very high tech. It can be done uh, simply by downloading few free softwares, which you can use and create virtual machines within your machine. Now, uh, you may, may have a Windows machine and you also want to try your hand on a new Linux version because now you must be hearing that Linux is also very powerful. Recently, they launched their 64-bit uh, uh, Linux, which is very stable, very powerful. It, uh, uh, you know, it uh, operates faster. It takes lesser space uh, as compared to Windows. So you, wa you want to basically try it out without changing anything. See, if you want to basically try a Linux and see how it works, then you need to buy a new machine. So why you want to invest in that is you can try it out. So the first thing is uh, you have to, you have a need where you want to try a new operating system without disturbing what you're doing right now. You have already configured your machine. You're already set. You, you have, um, you don't want to disturb what you're doing it but you want to try new operating system. And that is why a virtual machine can be a good answer where you can create a virtual environment within your PC and uh, load the new operating system on that and use it. So that could be one uh, use case. 
uh, and one of the use case could be to try the Ubuntu version of Linux. So as you can see in this screen, I'm trying to show that this is a Ubuntu. Who would believe that Ubuntu looks like this? This exactly looks like Windows. You have all these different icons. It has its own office. It has an email. It has printers and, and so on. And so it, ha it has a browser. So this exactly looks like and feel like and work like uh, a normal Windows PC. Although it is not Windows, it is different. It, it is a totally different uh, operating system, but look and feel and the usage is exactly the same. Uh, you don't need to know exactly a lot of technical stuff. Uh, there are a lot of forums in Ubuntu, which you can, if you are stuck and you want to try new things, you can go to these forums and uh, you know take help. And the best part is, since Ubuntu, which is a Linux version, is an open source, you can create your own. You can create your uh, own identity, unlike Windows, where you're stuck with a certain, certain view. But if you download an Ubuntu, or uh, if you download another version of Linux, which is called very popular, called Mint, uh, this looks exactly like Windows. You know, in fact, the Mint version is the closest Linux version, which appears and works like Windows. But although when I say it is like Windows, it is not Windows, it is Linux based on Linux. And all of these are 64 bit uh, operating systems. Uh, and then uh, you want to try this before you want to even shift. Uh, suppose you want to shift to uh, Linux, you want to try it and virtual machine could be a, a, a good uh, answer for you to get it. Now this is the Windows uh, uh, interface. And as you can see, there's hardly any difference between uh, this uh, Mint or Ubuntu. There is absolutely no difference in terms of how you use them. And uh, so you can uh, you know, choose whichever version you want to, whichever OS you want to try, uh, but you don't want to buy a new machine. So you should be able to create a virtual machine and download some of these things. In fact, there could be instance where you want to download older version of Windows within your Windows 10 and then use some of those softwares which you are not able to use now into that window in into that virtual machine. So virtual machine is a very powerful concept where within a machine you can create another machine. So we will talk about that in a bit. There could be a game requirement that you don't want to disturb your existing setup by playing game, you can actually create a virtual machine, uh, create a totally different username. You keep your identity separate from your uh, Windows uh, identity and play some games. So you can create a virtual um, machine, uh, register that game, download that game, play that game as if you're uh, somebody else, not yourself. Uh, and here I want to give you a little uh, warning that uh, when we say virtual machine, it is not the separate boot, boot drives as uh, it is usually con uh, confused. You know, you can boot from Windows or you can boot from Linux using same machine. You know, this is not a bootable solution. This is actually creating a virtual machine within a machine. There could be a requirement where you want to do ethical hacking. Suppose you're doing study, you're in college uh, and you're trying to learn how to do hacking. And obviously the whole point of hacking is that you don't want to show that, hey, I, you know, I'm so-and-so and I'm trying to hack. You want to hide who's trying to hack. And the best method to do that is you create a virtual machine in your PC or a laptop and use that to do your uh, ethical hacking activities. So this is uh, another use case. So what is a virtual machine? Virtual machine is nothing but an area of your uh, machine which thinks it is an independent PC. It, it resides within your PC, but it does not know that it is residing inside your PC. It has its own CPU, it has its own memory, it has its own hard disk. It's pretty much some, uh, uh, something like, uh, if, if we try to put it in uh, a physical world example, it's like um, a guest coming to your house. So while the guest is in your house, the guest is using your crockery for uh, having tea, uh, using your sofa to sit down and using your real estate to move around and also talking to you. Uh, so while the guest is in your house, the resources are being used, uh, which are from the host house. 
So the guest is a virtual machine and host is the actual operating system. So this is a simple example of how to understand how the virtual machine works. And then there is no limit to how many virtual machines you can create. You can create one or you can create as much as your uh, uh, hardware allows. So you can keep on making virtual machines, keep on running different things in that. You can also create virtual machines and give it to your colleagues, to your children, to your family members so that the work is used from one PC, but then they work uh, with separate login and they have a separate operating system. It does, it will not interfere in your work. So this way also, this is one requirement which you can fulfill and you create virtual machines within your hardware. And again, I like to repeat the word of caution is that you should not try this method if you do not have uh, adequate hardware, at least uh, a 10 generation chip, uh, at least 8 GB RAM and minimum one terabyte of hard disk. Because uh, if you don't have resources, then you will not be able to give justice to both uh, host as well as virtual machines. So moving to the next uh, uh, subject is like I'm trying to show in this screen is that you have uh, Windows uh, uh, environment running in, within Windows, you have multiple operating systems running in their own respective virtual machines. Now, virtual, uh, virtual, what is virtual machine? Virtual machine is a very unique, remarkable technology uh, by Oracle. And uh, uh, it, it is a piece of uh, software which you can download. Uh, I mean, if you go to Google, search for virtual machine, uh, you can search for it, install it, and then it will do, uh, it will ask you what you want to do. And uh, when it asks you what you want to do, you should be able to uh, create, a, say for example, one virtual machine, virtual machine one, then you can uh, assign a portion of your CPU to that particular virtual machine. You can assign uh, a memory, how much memory is uh, will be uh, restored, uh, given to this virtual machine and how much hard disk. Now, word of caution again here is if you decide to give, uh, say, for example, if you have 16 core system or let's say you have eight core system and then you decide to give two core of your uh, CPU assigned to this virtual machine and you uh, assign at least four GB of memory and say about 256 GB of hard disk or let's say 30 GB of hard disk to this virtual machine. Now, this hardware will be totally dedicated to this virtual machine and it will not be used uh, by the host. So you have to be very careful by uh, while planning the whole aspect of what the virtual machine will be doing. Uh, what is the requirement for that virtual machine? Uh, if it is a game, then you need to obviously give more resources to the virtual machine because it will not then scale up. But if you want to do something like board processing, uh, Excel, etc., those kind of things, then small things like one GB of RAM, uh, one core of your uh, CPU and uh, 20 GB of hard disk would be sufficient. So it really depends um, what is your need when you want to do a virtual machine. If you want to basically try a new version of Linux, suppose you have Windows and you want to try a new version of Linux, then I would say that you give at least two CPUs to the virtual machine 1 GB or at least 2 GB. If you have 2 GB of RAM, that would be sufficient and at least 20 GB of hard disk. That is, this is a sufficient configuration for downloading any of these versions of Linux, which is uh, Ubuntu or uh, Linux Mint or anything else, which you feel you want to try it out. And the best part is once you create a virtual machine, you can delete it. If something goes wrong, you know, things can go south anytime when you're trying to do these things you can simply delete virtual machine and it, it will not have any impact on your host operating system. It will not interfere with anything. So when you're trying to do some R&D, trying to uh, uh, load different operating systems, virtual machine is a fantastic concept which will allow you to do that. And uh, as I said, uh, the technology is uh, from Oracle and it's uh, simply called VirtualBox. Search for VirtualBox, download the software. It will take hardly two minutes to download, open it, and then start uh, creating virtual machines. You can create uh, more than one or one virtual machines. And um, once it is downloaded, 
uh, it runs like any other software and it will uh, you know you can distribute what you from your host setup you can start allocating these uh, resources to the virtual machine you can give it any name you can say trial you can say uh, ubuntu suppose you want to call it ubuntu or you want to do live streaming you can just call the virtual machine live streaming so you know exactly what is the purpose of this virtual machine so once you have created this virtual uh, uh, machine you can then start giving out things like cpu and memory uh, and you can choose how much you want to give out uh, remember if you give it uh, the these resources to the virtual machine the host will not be able to use what has been given out it will be a separate thing and host will lose control of that but there is nothing uh, there is nothing uh, you know uh, nothing to worry about because you can delete uh, uh, the entire virtual machine and resources will be restored back and then every time you start your pc you have to specifically start your virtual machine to make sh to uh, uh, to start allocating these resources so it is like any other software it will create a virtual machine and the best part is once the virtual machine is created in your pc virtual machine doesn't know that it is a software it actually thinks and behaves like a separate pc uh, it doesn't know that it is residing inside a, a, a pc it behaves and very much like a piece of hardware like piece of your laptop so that is the best part you can do anything with this and if something goes wrong simply delete it create another one download the new ubuntu in it download new mint in it or uh, download a new game or even download a new version of window and play with that so uh, you know this are, these are the some very good uh, examples of uh, why you should actually have virtual machines and now uh, with so much power available in the cpu and uh, so much ram available in your uh, pc you are using only 20 to 30% of that uh, while using your pc so rest of it is uh, just lying idle you can actually create one or two virtual machines and run different applications without investing in a new hardware so you can uh, create a live stream using a virtual machine and uh, use your host machine to create new videos uh, uh, without stopping the live stream so live stream will continue uh, on your virtual machine and uh, uh, host machine can be used for making your videos and stuff like that on your virtual machine you can run classes uh, your children can uh, study uh, without uh, you investing in a new laptop or a new machine for your children you can create two different uh, suppose you have two kids you can create two different virtual machines give them access uh, of what they need how much processing they need for their activities give them access they can continue using it and they will be running from the same pc that you use for your official purpose so i think uh, virtual machine is a fantastic concept it is absolutely free and if you're trying uh, to learn new things like uh, Ubuntu or Mint uh, at some point in time, because these uh, operating systems are now becoming very powerful and you want to shift in future from Windows to any of this Linux uh, version, then uh, here is a time where you want to try, uh, you know, virtual machine and virtual machine is absolutely free. Uh, you just download it like any other software, configure it and boom you start using it so this is something which i wanted to bring to you as a tip as an advice and since it is free you should be able to use it you should actually try it out uh, you don't need technical knowledge to be able to create a virtual machine nothing will go wrong just download a virtual box uh, from the website download a new operating system and first install virtual box it will tell you uh, how much memory CPU you want to allocate, allocate that. And once you have allocated virtual uh, box, uh, it, it's a virtual machine, start installing the operating system like Linux or even Windows if you have taken the license. Or if you want to uh, download a home edition, a home and student edition of Windows, which is free, you can do that. Download that in a virtual machine. Uh, suppose you have one or two kids, you can create two virtual machines with home edition of Windows give google classes on uh, both of them let the virtual machine uh, run on your laptop your kids can access it from uh, from a workstation and let it uh, let them run 
uh, their virtual machines from your hardware so i think there are lot of requirement lot of use cases which can uh, which you can leverage and hardware is also uh, quite uh, low cost nowadays very powerful which you can leverage to do different things even games so with this i will end uh, do write in uh, in the next uh, video i will include your comments and uh, if you like the idea you want to send your comments or you have any other idea how do we use virtual machine please, please feel free to write in so for today i'll say goodbye and i'll catch up with you tomorrow again with something more interesting